الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الخلق أجمعين محمد وأهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعجل فرجهم We have discussed about performing wudu before and now there is another type of wudu which is called wudu of jabira Jabira is when there is a pad or plaster or something covers because of three things. Either there is a wound, or there is a sore, or there is a fracture. So if there is a wound in the hand, you may put plaster for, let us say, three, four days or seven days, and then you cannot wash it at time of wudu. So here you will perform wudu with what is called jabira, with that plaster, with that pad. And sometimes there is a sore, and that sore may be bleeding or not bleeding, and using water for it is harmful. And you covered it in order to prevent water to reach that. So again, it is covered, and if you take the pad, it is harmful, then you perform wudu with jabira. Or a third possibility, if there is a fracture. So if there is a fracture, it is in the finger, and you are covering your finger with a pad because of the fracture. Or maybe the hand you are covering, the hand above, just below the uh, knee joint, um, the elbow joint, uh, you cover it. Or if it is a leg, the uh, place of wiping, it is covered. So again, it is covered because of fracture. So the standard here, we have to remember that Jabira is for those three conditions. Either there is a wound, or there is a sore, or there is a fracture. Now if somebody is putting, let us say, a cover because of other reasons, and water is harmful for him, then this is not a wudu of Jabira. If water is harmful, then he will perform tayammum, because this is not a Jabira. He use it for some other, let us say, muscle strains, and he said you have to be put closed for some time, or of his leg, to put in a plaster of Paris, not because of a fracture. There is no fracture, there is no wound, there is no sore, but there is uh, tendonitis, for example, and the tendons are in tension, so they need to stop movement of the leg. So for wiping, uh, he, he cannot wipe because it covers all the feet, for example. So that is not a Jabira. So to remember that the definition of Jabira, as it is mentioned here, the splint with which a wound or a fractured bone is bandaged or held tight and the medication applied to a wound, etc., is called jabira. Now, the wound may cover a cut or a sore. That is, I mean, ordinary eczema is okay. You can wash with water, but if there is a sore and uh, water is harmful, that is, uh, then you have to use uh, wudu of jabira. Wudu of jabira, how to be performed? You perform ordinary wudu. You wash around that place where there is a plaster, and then you wipe your hand over the plaster or the bandage. Let us say, Jabira, if you use the bandage, the translation, so wherever the bandage, the bandage over the wound, or over a sore, or over a fracture, you just wipe over the bandage and wash whatever to be washed around it. Or if it is on the feet, you wipe whatever outside is coming out, let us say the fingers may be open and the rest of the feet is bandaged. So we, you wipe on the fingers and then wipe over the bandage. So that is okay. In washing the hand, not to wash Jabira, though you have to wash your hand. But Jabira is not washed. You wash around it and then Jabira you just wipe it. That's all. No washing for Jabira. Though it is for hand or in the face, but Jabira not to be washed. Jabira is to be only wiped. By hand, you just wipe your hand, that's all. But you wash around it, and you try from up, down, 
in the hand or from the face up down, that is the way to be done. Now in issue 330, said if there is a wound or sore or a fractured bone in the parts on which wudu is performed, and if it is not bandaged, now there is another possibility, sometimes there is a sore but not bandaged, now what to do? If you use water, the doctor said water is harmful, may get infection, and water should not be used. And bandage is not there, so there is no bandage to make it jabira. So how to perform wudu? You cannot wash it, there is no bandage. So here, and say if it is not bandaged, then one should perform wudu in the usual manner if the use of water is not harmful. So in case water is not harmful, not all the sores um, or eczema, for example, the water is harmful, if it is not harmful, you can... Or if there is a wound and the wound is at the end near healing and water is not harmful. Even if there is a small fracture and there is no bandage for it, and if you wash it, no harm, then there is no harm. So if there is no bandage, then you have to wash it, if possible. Issue 331, if there is an unbandaged wound, again no bandage, sore or broken bone in one's face or hands, and if the use of water is harmful for it, in the first instance he said if water is not harmful, then uh, you use water as usual. But here if the water is harmful, one should wash the parts adjoining the wound from above down, downwards in the usual manner of wudu. And it is better to pass wet hand on it if it is not harmful to do so. Therefore, he should place a tahir piece of a cloth on it and pass a wet hand over that cloth. But in the case of a fracture, tayammum must be performed. See here what he want to say. There is no bandage and there is a wound or a cut and you can wash but there is no bandage so how to do there is no jabira to wash and the water is harmful if water was not harmful you wash it as ordinary way no problem but if the water is harmful it's a doctor said we'll get infection do not wash it with water and there is no bandage you put a piece of cloth above it you make artificial bandage, let us say, and you wash around and then just wipe above the bandage. So that just wipe above the bandage and that is all. If you can wipe above the wound directly fine, otherwise put a, if it is not harmful for little water, otherwise you put a bandage and just wipe above the bandage and that is okay. But if the fracture is open, and water is harmful. Here he said, no, no, not to put a bandage for a fracture, then you have to perform tayammum. Tayammum, we'll discuss it, that by hitting the hand on the earth and then uh, wiping the forehead from the hairs to the um, end of the nose, you know. Uh, so that is wiping and then you wipe the right hand and the left hand. That tayammum, the details we are going to discuss, but because its word is coming here. So he said, if you cannot perform wudu for broken bone, and it is open and water is harmful, then their tayammum will be done. But if there is a wound or a sore, then you put a piece of a cloth and then you do wiping above it, jabira. Issue 332, if there is an unbandaged wound, again, unbandaged wound, or sore or a fractured bone on the front part of the head, or on the feet, and he cannot wipe it, because the wound has covered the entire part of wiping. All his head is covered, or all his feet is covered. Or if he cannot wipe, even the healthy part, then it is necessary for him to do tayammum. Here, if all the part is covered and he cannot wipe it, then tayammum to be done. And as a recommended precaution, he should also perform wudu 
keeping a piece of tahir cloth on the wound, etc., and wipe that cloth with the moisture of wudu in his hand. So here, he said, because wudu of Jabira is not possible because all the feet is covered, uh, one feet is covered, so he will perform tamum, but he still, still, as a recommended precaution, he perform wudu and put a piece of a cloth and then wipe on the piece of a cloth with tayammum. So he combined tayammum and wudu with jabira. Wudu of jabira and tayammum were combined uh, in, in this issue. Yes. Issue 333, if the sore or wound or fractured bone is bandaged. Now that, if it was open, here is discussing if it is bandaged. And if it is possible to undo it, or if water is not harmful for it, one should unite it and then do wudu, regardless of whether the wound, etc., is on his face and hands or on the front part of the head uh, or on his feet. Now, if the water is harmful, okay, then bandage. But sometimes the water is not harmful. But we need the bandage in order to protect it for a quicker healing. But we can remove the bandage, we can wash it and return the bandage again. So he said if you can remove the bandage, no harm. You remove the bandage, perform proper wudu, and then put the bandage again. Issue 334. If the wound or sore or the fractured bone which has been tied with a splint or a bandage is on the face or hands of a person, and if undoing it and pouring water on it is it is harmful, you should wash the adjacent parts, which is possible to wash, and then wipe the jabira. So this is the uh, clear example of jabira. So there is a wound, there is a bandage, and to remove the bandage and wash the wound is harmful, so I will keep the bandage, I wash around it, and the bandage itself I just wipe one time. So this is the clear example of Jabira. Issue 335, if it is not possible to untie, to untie the bandage of the wound, but the wound and the bandage on it are tahir, and if it is possible to make water reach the wound without any harm, water should be made to reach the wound by pouring from above downward. You know, sometimes the bandage is nejis or sometimes it is tahir. If it is tahir and there is no blood but you keep to protect the wound, if it is open then it might open or get infection. But the water is not harmful, so you say, okay, you untie it and perform wudu and then return it again. But it is possible to wash it, and, and if the wound or its bandage is nejis, usually when there is a wound and a blood, then the bandage is nejis. You cannot wash above the bandage. So here what to do? He said, if it is possible to wash it and to make water reach the wound, then he should wash it, clean it from blood, clean the blood completely if it is possible, make a tahir, and perform wudu or jabira. And if water is not harmful for the wound, but it is not possible to make water reach it, or the wound is nejis and cannot be washed, he should perform tayammum. You see, the water is not harmful to the body. But the only thing, practically, because it is in edges and there is a bandage, splint, now you cannot take it. So here there is no point for Jabira because water is not harmful. And what to prevent you is because it is in edges, not actually harmful water. So he said, wudu of Jabira is not sufficient. Then you perform tayammum because you cannot perform wudu. You can perform wudu, except that the bandage is there and the bandage is nejis, you cannot take it out. So there is no jabira, because say jabira, when there is a wound and water is harmful and you cannot untie uh, the wound and open it, and, and the, so it will change to tayammum. So the difference, if it is not nejis, 
and you can wipe above it, then you wipe above it, but if what prevents you from performing wudu is because it is najis, and even the bandage above is najis, and because the bandage is sterilized, for example, you don't want to open it before seven days, full healing of the wound, but the water is not harmful, then here, he said, well, you will uh, have to do tayammum. Here is not a jabira. Issue 336, if the jabira covers some of the parts of wudu, then wudu prescribed for jabira is enough. But if all the parts of wudu are totally covered in jabira, then as a precaution, one should do tayammum and also do wudu as per rules of jabira. See, if part of the hand is there, then, okay, you wash other parts. But if all is covered, so then here he said, as a precaution, you perform wudu of Jabira and tayammum, because probably here, tayammum is one to be done, not wudu of Jabira. Issue 337, it is not necessary that Jabira should be made of things which are permissible in prayer. For example, if it is of silk or even of the parts of an animal whose meat is haram to eat, it is permissible to perform wiping on it. You know, wiping, you are putting a piece of cloth and wipe, then it is okay. Of course, to dress silk is not allowed, but to put piece of, it, of silk that is not dressing. So the jabira or the splint you are using may not necessarily to be of cotton. Even if it is of silk, there is no harm of it. Issue 338, if a person has jabira on his palm and fingers and he passes a wet hand on it while performing wudu, he can do the wiping of his head and feet with the same wetness. Now, if the jabira is on the hand, on the palm, covered, now he has not washed it with water. He just made wiping of jabira. So there is no water here. How he do wiping for the head? He said it is okay, even with the bandage there, because he just wiped the bandage by hand. With that bandage, he can wipe the forehead and, let us say, the right feet with the same thing. So he said that is sufficient and it is okay to be done in that way. Issue 340, if a person has several jabiras on his face or hands, he should wash the places between them. And if the jabiras are on the head or on the feet, he should wipe the places between them. And as for the places where there are jabiras, he should act accordingly to the rules. He said, well, if it is one, of course, you know, you wash around and wipe the jabira. But if jabiras are in two, three places, said so still is okay, you can wash in between them, and then you wipe on jabiras, whether one or two or three jabiras, makes no difference. Now, this is about uh, wudu, the other uh, rules are similar to what has been explained. Uh, but he said, what about ghusl, if somebody has a jabira, how to do ghusl? He said, ghusl of jabira is also possible. If you want to wash the body, then whatever part with bandage, he wash around it and then wipe on that, and that is okay. But if that is not possible, because let us say it is najis and uh, water is not harmful, but it is najis, then the um, rules will change into uh, tayammum. Um, that will come in uh, issue uh, 344. If something is stuck on the part of wudu or ghusl, and it is not possible to remove it, or its removal involves unbearable pain. Sometimes you have some medicine stuck, but it is, the water is not harmful, but I cannot remove this, you know, takes time to remove it. 
So here, because it is not forewarned or that, he said tayammum to be done. You cannot remove it, then do tayammum, because this is not a jabira. This is something uh, preventing water from reaching your skin without need for jabira, maybe for other reasons. No, no wound, no sore, and no fracture. Issue 345, in all kinds of ghusl, except the ghusl of mayyit, the jabira ghusl is like jabira of wudu. However, in such cases, one should resort to ghusl tartibi, I mean, irtimasi, to dip in water. One time is not possible because then water will wash the jabira. We say jabira to be wiped, not washed. So it is ghusl tartibi. He wash first head and neck, and then right side of the body, then left side. So when he reach part of Jabira, he just wipe above it, but he wash all the areas around it. Issue 345, in all kinds of ghusl, except, um, well, the rest of the issue, if there is a wound or a sore on the body, then a person has a choice between ghusl and tayammum. If he decide to do ghusl and if there is no jabira on the place, the recommended precaution is that he should place a tahir piece of a cloth on the unbandaged wound. So if there is bandage, jabira. But if there is no bandage, he said put a bandage and wipe over it. However, if there is a fractured bone in the body, he should do ghusl and should, as a precautionary measure, also perform wiping on the jabira. And if it is not possible to wipe on the jabira, or if the fractured bone is not in splint, it is necessary for him to perform tayammum. So if not possible to wipe, then we'll change from ghusl with jabira into tayammum, because jabira is not possible. Issue 346, the obligation, if the obligation of a person is to do tayammum, and if at some of the places of tayammum, he has wound, sore, or fractured bone, he should perform jabira tayammum according to the rules of jabira of wudu. Now again, now if in hand, which he has to do tayammum, again there is a jabira there. So what to do? He said, well, he cannot perform wudu, and then he will do jabira tayammum. Again, for tayammum, will be tayammum with jabira. Well, Allah made it easy at least to perform wudu or tayammum in whatever uh, possible way. Uh, now about the person who does not know his duty is to perform tayammum or wudu with jabira, then he has to combine both of them as an obligatory precaution. He doesn't know what is his duty, either he go and read what is his duty, or he has to combine both of them. He do tayammum and then he perform wudu or ghusl with jabira. And the last issue, 350, the prayers that one pray with the wudu of jabira are all right. It doesn't need that to repeat the prayer later on when his body is all right. You know, all his prayers were all right and accepted. And uh, whenever his uh, health is all right and there is no jabira, naturally he remove it and perform wudu uh, in a proper way. Now if somebody at the beginning of the time, it is a time of Dhuhr prayer at one o'clock, you find there is injury, but if you wait for three, four hours, he think that it might be possible to wash it with water because the wound will stop, no bleeding, and then is, you can uh, clean it, make it tahir because there is no blood. Uh, so he has to wait till end of the time of the prayer, and maybe one hour, two hours, three hours to wait till he can perform proper wudu. But if you think that no, this wound will take one day, two days, it's still there. So he can perform jabira at the beginning of the time of the prayer and offer his prayer. These are, in short, some of the rules and regulations of jabira. In short, as we said, what we call a bandage, that wudu can be done if it is for in cases of wound or sore or uh, fracture. 
And if the place is tahir, you can perform wudu of jabira above it. But if it is najis and because of najasat, you cannot do jabira, not because water is harmful, then you have to perform tayammum. That is, in short, about these issues. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahu ala muhammad wa alihi tahirin. Allahumma salli ala muhammad wa ala.